Hello everyone, I'm Christine, the Saucy Seamstress. Today we're going to take a closer look at the oldest piece in my collection. Though I've owned this gown for a few months now, I haven't really had the time to examine it until recently. And I really like being able to make these discoveries with you. This is the gown we'll be looking at today. It's a silk taffeta evening gown from the 1860s. Some of the characteristics of 1860s fashion started decades earlier. Here we can see how the low sloping shoulders and full skirts of the 1830s, 40s, and 50s evolved. Early in the decade, full bell-shaped skirts were the ideal. By the mid-1860s, more back swept style was the mode. Both shapes were created with the structure of a cage crinoline. Crinolines were concentric steel hoops that were attached to each other with fabric or fabric tape. They freed the legs and eliminated the need to wear multiple petticoats. Bodices were tight-fitting and worn over corsets. Well, let me just say right here and now, corsets were not prisons forced upon women by men. While some women did tight lace, most did not. And while it seems counterintuitive, a corset will often be more comfortable than simply wearing heavy layers of clothing all day. It's a supportive garment in more than one way. Day dresses and evening gowns differed in style, of course. And while day dresses were often high-necked and long-sleeved, Evening gowns were often off-shoulder or had very wide necklines with very short sleeves. Necklines were often trimmed with bertha, a bertha which is gathered a fabric, or lace. When we look at fashions of any period, it can be helpful to place them in context. A lot was going on during the 1860s. The Industrial Revolution was still going strong, making ready-made clothing available to the masses. On the other end of the spectrum, the Worth Fashion House began in 1858. But big changes in the world and United States had an effect on fashion. Some of the notable events or inventions of the 1860s, both bad and good, and this is mainly focusing on the US, was the Pony Express. Abraham Lincoln is elected president and twice and assassinated. The southern states secede from the Union, followed by the American Civil War. The Emancipation Proclamation is issued. Nevada becomes a state. 13th Amendment is passed. Civil Rights Act of 1866 is passed, the KKK is founded, the U.S. purchases the territory of Alaska from Russia, first transatlantic telegraph cable is finished, Alfred Nobel invents dynamite, Les Miserables, War and Peace, Crime and Punishment, and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and Great Expectations are all published, and last, the first college football game is played. Fashion is a thread woven through time. World events and developments affect fashion. Placing fashion in its historic context can help us understand some of the sartorial choices that people made. So let's get started. Pattern is a combination of weave and print. The beige, brown, and dark brown threads are woven into a type of plaid and then printed with abstract flowers. This dress features a high waist with a cartridge pleated skirt. The measurements uh, are waist 28, bust 34, the skirt length front is 42, and the skirt, skirt back length is 44. It features a bound hem. Um, I did have some issues getting it to fit on my form because it was too small and the proportions were off. The waist of my form was too low for this dress, and so I couldn't get it to properly fit. One of this gown's issues is the silk is shattering. Um, as you can see, it's mainly along the weft of the fabric, but there are areas uh, vertically, mostly where there are folds in the fabric, like here, uh, where it probably will shatter in the future. The waistband of the skirt looks a lot lighter than the rest of the fabric. You can also see here the cartridge pleats that were made to gather 140 inches of fabric into a 28 inch waistband. These, the skirt was then attached to the bodice using running stitches. There are six darts in the front of the bodice. Four of them have boning. And we'll talk about that more when we look inside. Boning holds the shape of the bodice. And if you have a prom dress or an evening gown, there's probably boning in the bodice for the same reason. There is underarm damage, which is common. Friction, sweat, and being about 160 years old will do that. The damage extends to the bodice where there are signs of repairs. 
there is evidence of alterations throughout the bodice and sleeves. Each sleeve has been taken in about four inches. There are also pa fabric panels inserted into the sides that you know, it was kind of let out. Um, and it seems that in its life, this garment has been both taken in and let out. The skirt is lined in polished cotton and bound with fabric tape. It's made of seven panels of 20 inch wide fabric with a half inch seam allowance. So that's a hemline of about 136 and a half inches. There are three panels in the front and four in the back. If we had this all closed up, um, this is what it would kind of look like. It would overlap here. The um, hooks are set way far back. We've got the eyes over here. And then we have no hooks on the skirt. We have a couple of eyes. Oh, oh, love it. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, we have a couple of eyes down through the waistband, but nothing over here. And then you can also see this really pretty, like, I got silk here, which has been used as um, sort of like the guard. So like if your eyelids are pulling open, um, no one will see. And then um, the skirt overlaps. We have this weird bow thing that I think has just fallen apart. Like I think it would have been more like that um, over top. <sighs> I don't know. So yeah, there's that. Um, again, skirt is made up of uh, four panels, so there is a seam running right down the center back of the skirt. Um, this placket, what was once a placket, has like ripped and separated. And when you open this thing up, okay, so first you can see how the um, collar is just attached with very big running stitches, like they're almost a half an inch long. Um, just kind of tack it in there, like super quick and dirty. We have pit stains here, but we also have um, perspiration guards in the uh, armpits, and they are safety pinned in both sides. Um, and we have some repairs done here over on this side. So, let's see what those are. Yeah, there is a tear there and they, there's a repair that was done. Um, you can see that the lining was made separately because here is a stitching to keep the um, waistband in place. I actually cannot see on the outside, so that's pretty well done. Um, but those are like some big um, back stitches, kind of. Um, we have boning, not in the third um, dart, but we do have two bones in the first two darts, and they run up to about right there oh it's right there um <clears throat> and then one right up the middle which is in uh cotton tape i can also see here how the um waistband is folded up um the skirt is folded down and we have you know in some places a good six inches of this fabric uh, folded down and then whipped into place. You can see the gathers, the the bulk of the gathers are in the inside. Now, in some places, like the front, they're very thin. They're about a quarter of an inch deep. Here in the back, I'm seeing like almost a half an inch uh, deep um, with these uh, cartridge pleats. Which is pretty interesting to me. But anybody else? Okay. Oh, 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 there's a pocket. There's a pocket. There's a pocket. There's a pocket. I didn't even see it. Okay. Where is it? I gotta find it. Oh, I found it. There is a freaking pocket right in the front. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why that's so exciting to me, but it is. There is a pocket. And look how big that pocket is. This is 
a man sized pocket. Or should I say, this is a freaking woman sized pocket. Give us pockets. We want pockets. Okay, so there you go. Pockets. It's actually pretty well. Like, oh, There it is. There's the pocket right in the front. Oh my gosh. It's got a pocket. It's in a really weird place. Like, I can't tell if it would go this way. No, because how would you get to your stuff? It would have to go that way. Oh my gosh. Okay, my apologies for this shaky, uh, jinky photo or video work. Um, I was just looking at the back here and I was actually thinking like, I should take a pattern from this and remake it. Um, not today, not today, but I was like, there are no bones in the back of this bodice. And then I was feeling around and we have one bone in the center back, about four, four inches right there where the, the hooks and eyes are. And actually we have several that are missing. And so there should be about 13 going down the back there aren't um and so i just wanted to record that um, some other things that i'm like noticing are that we have about uh, i mean and i cannot in these seam allowances it is, you know you can see there's color in there so this is about a quarter of an inch right and up here at the shoulder we have about half an inch the sleeves, you know, are about a quarter of an inch. Well, maybe a little bit more. It's hard to tell where the, like, stitch, well, there's two different stitches there, so there's, you know, that. Um, but then when we get down here um, to the side, we have like, okay, so this, there is a seam here, yeah, and on the other side. This is the side seam. And then we have these stitch marks here. You know, there's no thread there. Um, and then here too, but there's nothing. So, oh, and they're on the outside too. So it was taken in. So there's actually one there. Maybe there was a bone sewn there. Because that looks about the width. So this dress definitely has secrets. And there is never, I'm like never going to be able to figure them all out. But like this is the kind of stuff that like gets me excited. Like <laughs> for no reason other than like why is it like that? And I'll never know. I will never know. But it's just cool. And we do have that on the other side too. Um two rows of pinholes. Ugh. Anyway, so she's a mystery. Before packing the gown away, I took tons of measurements and did some sketches of the shapes of the pieces that make it up. If life goes as planned in the next few months, I hope to start a reconstruction of this gown in my size in late February, and I plan on vlogging the process. Thank you for watching. And if you made it to the, this far, thanks for sticking with me. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, hit subscribe. And please, if you have any questions, leave them below.